All right, so basically, I got two drywall spaces here creating an eighth inch gap. There's an eighth inch gap on the perimeter sides there and there. And then I tacked in one of the back of board screws about an inch in from the perimeter here and just held it in place. Okay, so so I want to nail it. Every, uh, screw, excuse me, I want to screw it in every six to eight inches. So my pencil is about six and three quarters of an inch. So just come down here, just below the uh, below the uh, the plane there. So so it's a slightly recessed on the uh, and I'm using a square head, making it nice and nice and easy for myself there and uh, so a little bit recessed so I can put some thin set in there uh, make a nice straight line there with the, just using your level do that for all your studs that you need to mark that on and then you'll have know exactly where to screw it into so I'm just going to continue on with that alright the back wall is completely done uh, the toughest cut was the one here at the top because the ceiling has a huge bow in it. Uh, I put the cut edge up against the ceiling. There's a pretty good size gap there. I'll just Because that's probably not going to receive any water, I'll just end up filling that in with uh, joint compound because it's right up at the very, very top. Uh, so anyways, that's that cut. I have a 1 8 inch gap along the perimeter to the studs all the way down. I got a 1 8 inch gap in between each one of the uh, wonder boards. So around the perimeter and then in between. And then I got to put my joints and all of that. Now the most difficult cut will be this wall here because it's got the, 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 um, uh, the water, the handle, and then the spout up at the top. I'm going to leave that wall for last. Now I'm working on this wall right here. The sheets come five feet by three feet. Now, oh by the way, because they come five feet by three feet, that works out really well. I didn't have to cut the length on the backboards at all. So this one and this one are, are literally two full sheets, no cuts. Uh, this one obviously was a cut. Now, and then this one over here, uh, I was trying to figure out exactly how I want to do it with the niche and everything. And the way that I got it drawn out is, is I'm going to see if I can draw, uh, do it in one piece and then cut the, net, the niche out and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so now I know that I want this edge cut. I'm going to say that this is the one facing up. Uh, I need to come over here 29 and 1 eighth of an inch. So I'm going to use my T-square. So I got a nice straight edge. Get it over here near the edge, and then okay, and that's 29 and 1 8. So then I'm just going to use my pencil, make sure I've got this all correct. All right, get that up near the edge, nice and straight on the T square. 29 and 1 8. That takes me to right there. So now I've got a nice line there. Now back here. It's 29 and a quarter. Come over here. 29 and a quarter. Nice straight edge. 29 and a quarter. Takes me to right there. Alright. Now that I got those two marks done, I got my straight edge that I was using upstairs. I'm going to cut, put this on the uh, lines that I just established. One there, one right there. I'll go ahead and give myself that. And then I'm using a carbide cutter. Same thing, I'll just score that down a couple of times. It's kind of like drywall, but it's a hell of a lot harder to cut. All 
Okay. This cut here right at the very end is a little, might be a little off, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change direction real quick. <clears throat> and come back the other way. Just to make sure it has it. Then, what I do <clears throat> is I take a 4 by 4 side of the line, there and right there. Okay, see how that snapped? Then just take this up, and then just like drywall with the utility knife, I'm just going to grab that and cut that at the diagonal there. There's my scrap. Okay, so now I've got that taken care of, like that. <clears throat> now, on my cut edge, I want my cut edge going this way, like so. Right. Now, I'm just going to mark out where I want to put my... Um, my niche. Okay, now that I'm going around the perimeter here and I'm kind of tight, I don't want to uh, uh, ruin that edge, so I'm going to pre-drill with a masonry bit here. Okay, one thing I forgot to uh, show you is that I'm also checking to see how, squid, how uh, flush everything is. And then, so I'm bringing my, my four foot level up here. Everything is pretty good. So a little bit of a lip right there, but when the thin set will make that up. And then coming up all the way nice and straight. Same thing with the back of board here. I'm you know, looking at the whole wall and how, how this is all going to tie in. And generally speaking, I don't know, I got maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So with all that prep work that I did doing the, um, prior to putting up the wonder board is going to help make everything straight and line up. And that's why I went through like a lot of energy to put, uh, put forth to make sure that the wonder board was, uh, that the, um, be prior to the wonder board, the studs and the, uh, where the wonder board attached to was as flat as possible prior to putting on the wonder board. That'll make the whole job easier downstream. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that pipe that I scored right there when I was um, cutting out using my tool. 
Well, anyways, uh, cutting, I was cutting out the drywall. I was using the uh, sonic tool, and it scored that uh, vent pipe right there. So what I did was, I have to waterproof the shower anyway, so I've got red guard. So all I did was just take the red guard and just take a couple of coats of that and sand it. I sanded down the ASB there and just put a couple of coats of red guard on there. So that'll help also waterproof and seal that up. So that's another good use of uh, red guard, not just to uh, do your uh, shower. You know, I'm going to, you know, of course, put red guard uh, uh, as the waterproofing agent on all this, but. It's also can be used if you come across a situation like that. Okay, as you can see, the wonder board is up 100% all the way up to the ceiling, all the way down. The two niches are in. I got to do some sealing around the niches, but before I get to that, I want to uh, blend in the uh, drywall. So what I want to do is I'm going to take out this piece right here, and I'm going to take out this piece right here. Uh, from this edge to there is like about 38 inches. I have a full sheet of drywall that I want to blend in. So when this comes to this wall, it kind of blends in. The way this is right now, there's a huge gap right there. Let's see, do I have a sheet of? I don't have any spare drywall right here where I can show you. But this uh, distance right here, uh, let's see if I can do it with the tape measure. Right this distance right here. Uh, to the back of that is, well, to, to the flush face of that is about 7 eighths of an inch, or about 15 16 So i got to come out here and then come flush with the wall over to here. So that's it for now. Uh, the, uh, I'm just wanna, I want to try to get that drywall in and matched up before I uh, tape my uh, joints and uh, put in the uh, mesh tape and all that. Okay, I'm getting ready to put in my last sheet of drywall right here, and let me show you how I, uh, I did that. Let me zoom in right at that transition so that you can see how I did that. So I know, all right, right above that block, let me just come back a little bit, oops. Okay, so right here, you can see that I've got my um, wonder board. Now I want to put my drywall in, but I wanted it to come up flush or just slightly recessed. So what I did was, is I just took this, put it up against here, and then just added shims until it came out just slightly recessed over this. And, and, and it turned out to be six shims. So I have two studs here, so I just double, double shimmed that out. Then after I got that one established, then what I did, let me zoom back, then what I did was, is I took a level, and I went across where I want to end up with and across here and then I determined how many shims it took, it took inside this stud wall in order to make it uh, flush out. The answer was four shims. So I'm starting out with six shims, going down to four, going down to zero. By doing it this way, I know that I'm, I'm creating a, a little bit of a swerve in the wall, but because I'm extending it out over uh, 38 inches, then I know that it shouldn't be as noticeable. The distance from there to there is 38 and 5 eighths. So that, I already got my piece of drywall already cut, which is right over here. Let me uncradle this. So I already got my piece of drywall cut. I already measured everything out. All I gotta do is hammer that in. I'm using uh, inch and 5 eighths inch nails, uh, ring shank nails, which are right here, and by going in an inch and five eighths, uh, let's see here, I accommodate for the half inch of uh, drywall plus the shims and everything. So I should be grabbing approximately three quarters of an inch of meat on the uh, ring shank nails, which should be fine. All right, so anyways, next step, put this in. All right, here's an update. The, uh, all the drywall is in. This piece is in right there. And... Here is all that niche and all that joint. So I still have to obviously tape everything and do up the joints. Uh, this side here is done as well. It's all brought flush right in there, so you can, so I can do those joints. Uh, and then I also put the piece of drywall down there. So all the drywall is in in the whole bathroom. I just need to um, take
rotate the joints and do regular drywall mudding and all that. Uh, I do wish that I had jogged this corner because my tile is going to start here and go 24 inches out that way and then this is the edge tile right here. I do wish this I would have cut this uh, longer from from here over uh, like this one. I do because this one is actually the way that I should have done it. Hopefully that's not going to be critical on me. I'm going to do you know do the joints up and everything but I do kind of wish that I had offset that joint just like that over here. Uh, I had the 2x4, I got the wooden back of the wall so I, I could have done it and I had to trim that anyways so I just have to leave that longer. But it's done, it's done, it's up, I'm not changing it. That is it, okay. Alright so I'm at the point now where I've got everything here all cleaned up, I got, I got all the cement board on and I want to start addressing my uh, joint. Anyways, when you put a level on it right here, these are already sloped out, which is really good. So the, so what I need to do now is I just want to take some sandpaper, uh, which is right here, and then I'm just going to rough up the niches. Once all that's done and wiped down, I'm going to take some 100% pure silicone and put that in the joint here all the way around the perimeter as well as the screw holes uh, all the way around here. Now on the uh, cement board, the wonder board light, they say they want the joints here filled in and then you use this type of uh, uh, cement board uh, tape uh, in order to uh, do the seams here but they like to see the perimeters not done that way but this uh, back here in the back of the shower the, the gap that's here and here is where I would like to put something so what I'm going to do is since I'm going to have the 100% uh, mold free silicone I'm going to fill up just the edges along these joints here with this product right here the same product that I'm going to use to fill up these gaps right here and then of course everything's going to be waterproofed so looking at it back like this that edge joint right there all the way up and down with silicone and that back one joint there with silicone the seams I'm going to do uh, with the tape and with thin set mortar uh, polymer modified thin set mortar on the joints between the seams but on the perimeter just in the back on the edges here, uh, I don't care that much about the edges here because this is where it's going to go ahead and meet the drywall. So on those edges there, I'll probably just end up using drywall mud. Uh, same thing on this side over here where it meets the green board. Uh, I'll either use thin set mud or rapid set uh, or something like that. You know, I'm not going to worry too much about it because uh, I don't really need the waterproofing out that far. Uh, okay, so. That's Okay, both niches are done, 100%, really nice. You'll see how much waterproofing, extra waterproofing I put in here uh, after everything is said and done. So this is going to be 100% waterproof. One thing i got to tell you, as you're doing the job, you just build up confidence that you're going to have a leak tight job because you're putting so much energy into it. Okay, now I'm going to uh, silicone up this uh, gap right here and the one over here right there. All right, I'm finally at the stage where I can do the uh, do the seams like right there, and 
I've got my thin set mortar. I'm using a flex bond, which is a polymer modified mortar. So you should say that down there somewhere. Polymer modified. This is a part of that lifetime warranty by Custom Building Products. And I'm going with the color white because my grout color is going to be bone, which is kind of an off-white color. A uh, couple of tools. So I got I got I got water and. Uh, that I'm going to mix mix it up right here with uh, and a couple of other tools that I have is uh, the uh, let's see here I got the uh, mesh tape which is supposed to be for the wonder board just a putty knife margin trowel uh, flat bladed flat bladed uh, trowel and just a uh, taping knife uh, looks like it's an eight inch taping knife this stuff here you can cut it one or two ways. You can use your utility knife, cut it like that, put it on like that, put your uh, um, you know five and one knife here, or possibly even just your taping knife, like that, same thing. Alright. So anyways, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and mix up some uh, mix up some material and get going on this project okay so I made it up a little soupy for right now so this is the consistency it's a little thin so I'm going to let that sit for five minutes and then we'll mix it again and then we'll be uh, should be good to go so I use this power mixer right here in order to do it. So now that I'm just waiting, I'll just clean this up here. Hold on. All right, the last time I you saw me, I uh, had done a first coat, and that first coat was really loose. Uh, here's a second coat. I have, The consistency you want is peanut butter, really. So here, this is the second coat on this wall and on this back wall. And I ran out of material, and this is what the first coat looked like on the first wall, if that shows up at all. You can, you can still see the mesh uh, fiberglass, like around the niche, and... Uh, here, there's a, like a little bit of a second coat right there, so you can kind of see the difference between here and here. So, anyways, the back wall came out pretty good, and that wall, I'm gonna mix up another batch right now, right now, and finish this up right here, so I can get this thing ready for waterproofing. So that's where I'm at. Okay, I just got done mixing it up with the power mixer, and I want to show you how thick I got it. I think this is a better consistency. So what I did, what I do is I take a good scoop on my margin trowel and then try to fling out the excess and then hold it vertically this way and to see if it's going to slide off the trowel or not. You see how pretty much it's sticking right to the trowel, it's not really falling. That's, a, that's, that's about the thickness that I'm trying to go for. So I just made, made this batch up, I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes, then I'll mix it one more time. And then I'll go ahead and start putting it on the wall.
All right, so pretty much you saw me do that wall right there, go around the niche. I'm just gonna kind of go around the rest of the shower and get everything just right. I'm trying to make this wall here and also this wall over here where it intersects from tile to paint where it's as smooth and flat as possible. All right, I'm gonna show you a detail now on how I'm doing when I installed the cement board, you'll see that I installed it with a gap between where the cement board ends and the bottom of the tub. It's not sitting right on the, the tub because if there's water on this tub, I don't want it to leach up into the cement board. If the waterproofing is going to be on this layer right here, so if there's any water, it'll hit the waterproofing, come down, have a little bit of an air gap, then travel to the tub, and then gravity will draw it in towards the tub. But, uh, and that's... Okay, so I want an air gap between the bottom of the cement backboard underlayment and the tub. So this way, when the waterproofing is on this wall, it will, if there's any water going through the tile and the grout, it will hit the waterproofing material, come down, have an air gap, drop down to the tub, and then gravity should take it into the tub. So that's how I'm going to do all of this area here. But here on the edges of the tub and on the other edge, I'm going to finish it a little bit different. I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is take my two inch margin trowel here and <clears throat> I'm going to put some material in here, I'm going to just fill that in 100%, right? right just out here on the edges. And the reason why is because if there's water here, I'm going to, I want to waterproof from about here, uh, and about here, all the way to the floor. I'm going to waterproof from there all the way to the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in my thin set here. I've already got that green board so tight that the waterproofing will touch the green board and then touch the tub and I'll hit that corner right there really well. It's just that right here in this corner where the two um, where the green board met up with the cement board there was uh, there was that big gap that you saw. Well now that gap is taken care of with thin set and then I'm going to put in uh, waterproofing material there take care of that joint and that's how I'm gonna that's how I'm gonna try to ensure as much waterproofing material uh, so that these so that both sides of the tub this side and the other side are both protected all right this is all I'm gonna do for now I'm gonna let this set up I gotta what I do is I open up the window put the fan on low and then just let it dry out and it's going to take a few hours. I can tell that everything's going to work out fine for the waterproofing but I'm, I can, I'm going to need another coat and the reason why is because I'm going to have lippage between this green board and the cement backer board. I can already tell that there's a lip there that I still need to work out and smooth out on this seam right here and on this seam right here. So I know that I'm going to still have to work that. The camera may not be picking this up, but I'll put a board on it after this dries. I can show you how much out I am and see how much I need to build up. So I'm just going to let this dry out for now. Okay, I'm back at it. I'm smoothing the walls. This wall here is smooth. This wall here I have not smoothed out yet. Let me show you what the difference is. Let's see if the camera will hopefully pick this up. Okay, now, see how I got it touching right there and you can see the gaps in the wood, uh, like right where my thumb is at, right there. Hold on. Right there, there's like a gap. There's my safety glasses. And over there, where my thumb is now, you can see it's touching the wall. So what I'm doing is I'm putting some mud on the wall and I'm just trying to get it nice and straight all the way down. This wall here, I've just done that too. I don't want to touch it with the board because it's still wet so I don't want to show you that there's 
I pretty much got it down to where it's between a sixteenth and, and it's approximately a sixteenth inch of a gap maximum where my tile is going to go. So that's a very, very straight wall where the tile is. And then it'll come to a little bit of a bend. Uh, see the bathtub ends right about there. And then it'll kind of go towards the drywall after that. But hopefully that will be seamless with the tile that I use. So anyways, I'm going to do this wall now. I, I got a a uh, batch of mud there slaking up so I had a couple minutes so I just wanted to show you where I'm at and I'm going to continue on. It's tough when you do it by yourself because you don't, can't, don't have someone mixing the mud for you. Here's an update on the project. I got all three walls, the left wall, the back wall, and the right hand side wall all smooth to within a, within a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, so when I put the tiles on it should be uh, pretty good. Uh, so while that's setting up and drying I went through and taped all of my seams uh, for where all my joints are for my drywall so I can uh, put the, that on. I'm going to use a setting type compound for that for the first coat. So this is ready for that. I've already sanded down all of the uh, the walls with some 80 grit uh, sandpaper and a stick so all the walls are nice and rough and then I just taped all my joints where I'm going to be putting up you know where the where you tape all your joints for uh, standard drywall standard drywall practice okay so that's where I'm at now I just got to let this uh, cure out next step it, uh, after that dries out uh, verify that I'm straight with my straight edges I got one here I got the four foot level, fat max, plus I got this one, plus I got this one for the 30 inches. And then once that's set up and good to go, the next step is the good old red guard. Put that on for my waterproofing, that's it. For my first coat on the, uh, on the walls, I'm going to use this uh, lightweight fast set 90 which is a setting type compound as opposed to a traditional joint compound. The reason why I want to use this is because generally speaking it's better for crack prevention. So when you're looking at the walls like the joint right here, and this is my first coat, uh, the setting type compound is more crack resistant. So between the tape and the setting compound for the first coat it gives you a pretty good uh, opportunity to not have the wall crack on you downstream. The drawback is is that it's harder to sand, it's harder to, to work with than you in this case only have 90 minutes. I bought the 90 minute set. They even have like 20 minute set uh, so you can do it real fast and, and keep going uh, for your job so you don't have so much downtime. But uh, I wanted more working time so I bought the 90 minute set. And, uh, and that's it. Okay, so all the walls are ready to go for the waterproofing material, Red Guard. I already wa uh, scraped that wall, that wall, and that wall, and I washed down that wall, that wall, and I got this wall to go. Let me show you what I, what I was doing. So first thing I did was I just take a putty knife, and I just go over the entire wall to make sure all the little booger things are all taken care of and, and knocked down. Now I'm taking a, uh, a wet sponge and I'm just going to make sure that there's no dust on the wall. Everything's nice and uh, nice and good for the uh, waterproofing material. A lot of dust collected inside of this uh, niche. Okay, I got my container red guard, and I just started on this wall here, kind of cut in around the perimeter uh, before I use the uh, roller. I just wanted to get all my cut in. I'm going to, you know, cut everything in and then use the roller in one shot. The, um, 
And you can see the way that I'm doing the niches. Uh, this is just the first coat, but I'm bringing it from the inside all the way to the outside. So this way, er, this all the niche uh, crevices and everything, right at all the potential leak points will all be water sealed, waterproofed. All right, so and then I'm just going to continue on with the back wall, which is simple, and then this one niche wall here, and then that's it. So it's uh, it just kind of goes on like a paint. Uh, let me show you a little bit right here. I mean, if I wanted to, I could just use the paintbrush for everything, but you can see it just kind of goes on, just like paint. And I already got everything all taped off here. So I'm all taped off where I want to be uh, set up, and um, I'm just going to keep cutting in all the way along, and then that's it. First coat completely done, all the way around. Stuff really stinks, uh, but that's one coat done. This is how much I used of the uh, Red Guard, so you can see how much. I was hoping to get three coats on this wall. Be lucky to get two two coats, but um, I mean, a lot of people say the top portion of the shower isn't quite as critical as the bottom four feet. The bottom four feet, especially around the wet where the shower comes out, this is the most critical area from here over to here, and then uh, from the bathtub up four feet. That's the most critical area. So. I'm, I'll start out in this area when I do the second coat. Now this coat I went up and down. The next coat I'll go side to side. Uh, Red Guard is a waterproofing material, but it's also a, a crack isolation uh, membrane. So it'll help for crack isolation as well. Okay, so that, that's where I'm at now. I'm gonna let this dry out, for the, wait for the second coat. Okay, second coat of Red Guard. Going on the wall, gonna try to focus on this area and this area at first. And here we go. Okay, that's two coats of Red Guard on there now. I'm just going to let that set, dry out, and cure out. This stuff stinks pretty bad. I got a fan going, trying to get some airflow through the window. That's it. Okay, the second coat is cured. And I just went around with the paintbrush, just a three inch uh, paintbrush here and did a third coat but only on the what I call the critical areas like around here the whole perimeter of the tub by the way this red guard goes on pink and dries red so when you see the pink you see the third coat that I just put on uh, this section right here there I went around the niche I did the corner all the way up. On the back wall I just hit a few spots where it was, I don't know, looked thin, whatever. Did around the full niche here, did around the um, the valve, the tub spout, and the, where it comes out up there, plus I did the corner as well. So all I have to do now is let that cure out and we are ready for tile after this.